All right, we're back here at Murph 2021, and I found Joe from Makers on Tap. How you doing, Joe? Good. Man, it's been too long since we've hung out. It's, wow, it's been a long time. You guys were on the stream on Hot Makes recently. Yeah. And we were talking about the milk crate, and you showed it off a little bit. But yeah. before we get to the milk crate, tell everybody how they can find you. Uh, best place to look for me is on Twitter. I'm Joe Spanier Makes. And uh, I'm nemesis.robotics on Instagram. Those are probably the two most places I'm active. And he does a lot of stuff from CNC and laser. He is actually working with Lightburn now, which is super exciting. I can't wait to explore that. Yeah. But uh, in our last Hot Mix video, or uh, Hot Mix session where these guys were with us, he showed us the milk crate and he has it here at Murph. So tell us a little bit about it. Yeah, so um, this is a small format CNC router that is fully enclosed. And um, basically, if you've got access to a, like a table saw or a circular saw sure. and a printer of like Ender 3 or Prusa Mini size, you can make every component for this machine. Um, everything is like easily sourceable and uh, the machine just works. It's built to be your first CNC machine. Nice. And and so you, you print parts for it. Yep. You put together uh, like $400 in wood currently. Yeah. No, I'm just, <laughs> but, but you know, tell us about the build. How did you get to this point? Because you did other things in the past, right? Yeah, so I've built a lot of CNC machines. Right. And um, you know, over the course, my very first CNC machine was built about this size and okay. similar format to it. But what I really wanted was a way for people to get into this part of the hobby uh, and have a very functional machine at the end. That's awesome. I was really disappointed with all a lot of the current desktop CNC router options. <laughs> and you know, at the end of this, you can machine wood, you can machine plastics, you can machine aluminum wow. with no problem. That's awesome. Um, and it's a lot of forced skill acquisition. You okay. have to drill and tap steel, and it's okay. You have to <laughs> build a little bit of things with wood, and it will be fine. So it's essentially the maker's CNC. That's yeah. what I'm saying. I mean, and if it build, uh, I guess, is it build area? What's your yeah. what's your work area? We'll call yeah, it work that. area. Work area. What, what you got? Uh, 12 inches by nine inches by about three inches in Z. Okay, so, so it's that's also, actually pretty good. Yeah, it's also like the largest format desktop right. CNC router in this footprint, which right. is about 500 by 500. The whole footprint? Yeah. That's awesome, and what powers this thing? I mean, you had the router here, right? but what are you powering You know, your, your stepper motors and stuff with? So the control is all the open builds black box, okay. uh, which is what I recommend. Sure. But you could run literally anything. If you're comfortable with it, you can okay. do whatever you want. Nice. The black boxes are really easy to build a Gerbil-based CNC controller. Sure. They've got a really nice interface for it. It's a little expensive, but the thing just works and you don't have to question anything. Okay. And like every component of this has been selected with like the least amount of effort put out for okay. the user. Like, so so a couple questions, is it is it open source? It will be open source. It will be open source. That's awesome, open source. And maybe we can uh, we can actually slide that into maybe we'll put the file on Thangs. Yeah. Which is one of our sponsors here at Murph 2021. Thank you so much, Thangs, for that. Uh, also, I noticed that the color here is pretty nice. What are you printing this at? So um, all of the uh, red parts are made out of Greengate uh, PETG recycled. Wait, did you say Greengate PETG? I did. They are a sponsor too. Thank you yeah. so much, Greengate. They're actually in a booth right here watching right now. And but, uh, a so, good good friend of Makers on Tap is Billy Rubin. There you so go. We printed this all in Billy Rubin's Cherry Pie Red. Which is uh, an awesome color. Billy Rubin's Cherry Pie Red is, it's way is great. Um, yeah, so everything's printed out of PETG. There's no super fancy filaments needed. Okay. Um, I've printed a full PLA one that worked perfectly fine. Okay. So like, so there's no crazy filaments sure. that you need to do. Um, so it's so like overall print time. It doesn't look like there's a ton of print in here. So it's probably not crazy on the print time wise. Yeah, it's it's about a full kilogram of filament. Okay. The okay. longest parts are actually these. Okay, um, right here. Yeah, these take about. 14 hours for the, the set of three between the two. Sure. But the rest of it, pretty quick. it's maybe 20 hours of total print time. That's not bad. And then can you source the parts pretty much everywhere? You're gonna have that load listed somewhere? Yep, yep, the awesome. bomb will be available. Oh. He's actually planning on having the STLs available this weekend. And then Dave from Print and Solid came by and made a suggestion that I really like. <laughs> so we're gonna it hold won't be available be this minute. weekend. 
We'll let you know. When, when Joe says it's ready, I'll let everybody know when the, when the files are ready because I, I'm going to do this. I'm going to build one of these as a video because I love this thing so much and I need a CNC that works. Yeah. Um, I better not say what I was thinking. <laughs> I'll, I'll let Caleb edit this part out, but, but no, I'm just joking. But no, I think what I'll do is when you're ready, let me know because I want to build this like start to finish and document that you okay. know, for the channel because it not only takes you from this, this you know, printing part of things, but it's kind of the all around maker, right? Like you yeah. said, you're working with the wood, you're working with a router, then you got to put together all your other parts that I have no idea how they work, really. That's why he's here. Yeah. And <laughs> so that's awesome. Joe, thank you so much, man. I really yeah. appreciate it. It was great to see you. We're going to see Joe soon because he has a robot right over here that's right over my shoulder that does selfies. So we're going to check that out, too. <laughs> so this is what I think is the most realistic Twitter bot ever created. Uh, basically, this is the beta version of Tormox robot arm, the ZA6 that's coming out in the next couple months. Oh, wow. Uh, I've been working with them as a consultant on the project. OK. And um, we wanted like a fun, flashy project to play with here. So basically, <laughs> what we did was push a button. He takes a picture. Now you're just wasting my time. He insults you. <laughs> and then he posts a picture to Twitter. Uh, hopefully. That's Internet awesome. Internet here has been a little spotty lately. <laughs> but um, it's all programmed in Python. So if you have like any programming experience at all, it's pretty easy to do. And uh, this project is PyBooth. So we're actually just communicating with a standard Raspberry Pi to do all the Twitter bot API stuff. Very cool. And uh, yeah, it was super cool. We put it together in about three nights. Nice. The whole project. And it's been fun. <laughs> and uh, if the internet ever comes back, it'll work. <laughs> so. And you get to play with a, an awesome robot. Yeah. An awesome robot. Yeah, so the robot is a mixture of Ross and Machine Kit. And like one person in your audience is probably going to understand what that means. <laughs> But uh, what it means is like for research platforms or small for format manufacturing, it's super powerful. Nice. The robot's going to be sub 20,000. Okay. It runs off single phase 220. So like it just works in my garage. That's cool. And if you have an existing uh, Tormach machine, it just directly interfaces. Oh, so okay. like you can send code to the, it start jobs like from this right here, right? Yeah, from the robot or from the controller. And That's like, cool. It's really cool. That's awesome. Well, uh, you know, we had to pop over here after we talked about the milk crate because I had to show you the selfie robot. Joe, thanks again, man. Yeah, I yeah. appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.